Hey guys, it is Tanya and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another speed build. I really wanted to play around with the pawn tool again. I haven't played with it since I had super early access to Cottage Living a few weeks back now. And so uh, today I am building a little house that has like the water wheel on the side of it that is in the debug catalog. And I just wanted to make something that was a little bit quirkier. So it's got a weird roof line and some fun colors. I had fun with patterns and textures on the inside. And I just wanted to experiment a little bit. So I hope you guys do enjoy this. But before we get any further into it, I just wanted to remind you guys that I'm currently hosting a giveaway for a pack of your choice from The Sims 4. That giveaway is ending on the 29th of this month of July, so it's almost over. Make sure you get the chance to enter, and if you would like to, all you have to do is download Disney Emoji Blitz using the link in my description down below. Get to level 20 in the game and screenshot that. Send it to me over on Twitter under my pinned tweet. I am Miss Griffey over there, and you'll be entered to win a pack of your choice. And seeing as Cottage Living just came out, I I think this is a really perfectly timed opportunity so make sure you enter here soon and don't worry I will have another one coming up shortly as well. With that out of the way let's talk about this funky build and what I'm doing with the roof line here. I really wanted it to be kind of asymmetrical and have it like curved to one side and then I decided why don't I have it curved to the other side too but at a different angle and make that sort of like a carport. I thought that that could be kind of an interesting idea. Also, you might notice that I'm using the roof texture here that is from Island Living instead of the one that came with Cottage Living. And the reason I'm doing that is because the one with Island Living actually has the texture on the bottom side of the roof, not just on the top. And I really didn't want that gray under roof texture. So I used the cut or the Island Living one here, but I am using the roof trim still from Cottage Living. Hopefully it looks okay. I think it looks okay. I would have preferred if the one from Cottage Living didn't have the gray on the bottom. It just had the texture like this does. But, you know, <laughs> for right now, I thought that this worked. I also really liked what I did on the side of the build where I have a curved piece of roof. Right now it's over a little balcony, which I'm just getting rid of now. But I like how that sort of mimics the wheel that I have on the side here. I just thought it was kind of a fun little piece to add to <laughs> the shape of this house. I was really trying to, you know, make something a little bit different. And I think I achieved that uh, using a lot of the new windows. We're using some of the older planter boxes we have though. These are ones from Get Famous. And then there ends up being, I think three different cars on this lot. There is the one that I put in the carport. We have a tractor. And then I'll be grabbing a truck a little bit later as well and putting a bunch of supplies on the back of the truck. Obviously there's a pond here. There ends up being a place for you to grow crops, oversized crops or regular crops. And then I end up adding a chicken coop as well. There's no animal sheds on this lot. For some reason, I've been really enjoying the chickens and the farming with the crops. And I'm not as inclined to put down the animal sheds when I'm building. I think it might be because the like where they exit the door is just like a black void. And it looks a little odd and it's already styled. I wish we could just like place down cows and make them stalls and stuff. Whereas the chicken coop, I'm fine with it being how it is. I don't know. Maybe that's why I'm more inclined to do that. But I'm sure I'm going to be doing a big farm sometime soon with plenty of animal sheds and all of that. So if you guys have any specific things you're like, oh, if you're going to do a big farm, make sure you add this. Like, I don't know. Should I have two animal sheds? Should I have seven animal sheds? I have no idea. Uh, I'm not used to the idea of having so much, uh, I guess, so many animals. And I haven't played around with that yet. But I do want to build a larger farmhouse sometime soon. I think that could be really fun on one of the larger lots that came with Henford on Bagley. But right now we're just doing some landscaping. I did pop down that truck I had mentioned and now we're getting some little stones to make a pathway from the front door over into the gardening space. I used a ton of show live edit objects per usual <laughs> to add all sorts of landscaping and decoration to this lot. And I also play around with quite a bit of terrain paint kind of layering and erasing and adding a lot of different paints to try and make it look as natural and I don't know varied I suppose I didn't want it to all be one terrain paint I wanted to have a variety of them anyway now I am filling up the back of the truck I have a couple of planters in there a few oversized pumpkins I end up putting some of those over by the garden patches as well and I just think it looks really cute. I love the different sizes of crops you can get now, specifically the pumpkins. That's the one that I'm most excited about. You have like regular small pumpkins, the medium ones are a little bit bigger. And then I like that the oversized ones are like toppled over on the side. 
I think that that's gonna be so nice when it comes to like October. Oh my gosh, I'm already so excited for all the autumnal builds and spooky builds that I'm gonna do now that we have all of these new items and I'm just pumped. Also, I've already seen this world in autumn now. I saw it in my Let's Play that I'm doing over on Twitch and it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning <laughs> seeing this world in the fall. So very excited about that. But anyway, we're inside now working on a floor plan. I wasn't exactly sure how many bedrooms I was gonna go for here. It ends up being three, but it could easily be four if you want it to be because there is a room downstairs that at first I thought was going to be a office space. And then I decided last minute it was going to be a dining room and it's actually far away from the kitchen, but I thought, you know, maybe it was a repurposed room. It was originally an office, but they wanted an actual formal dining space. So they decided to turn the office or spare bedroom or what have you into a dining room. So that is what I did here. Anyway, we're working on the kitchen now. and <laughs> Here's some of the quirkiness here. The colors and patterns in here are a little strange. We have these bright blue walls and then yellow and red curtains. I just thought it was interesting. Something about it was like calling my name. I was like, it's ugly, but I love it. So I had to keep it. Let me know what you guys think about it. I, I don't think this house is like too over the top. It's just a little bit quirky and has like a lot of colors and stuff in it. And I think the exterior is the quirkiest part, like the, the roof line. <laughs> I was just having fun with it. I like to experiment with things like that quite often. Uh, some of my favorite builds come together that way is experimenting with a build, not really having a clear like idea. Like the idea was I want to make something a little strange. <laughs> I didn't know what the roof line was going to look like or how many bedrooms or what sort of furniture. I was just like, I want to experiment with colors and a weird roof line. Let's go. And <laughs> I just started, didn't even look up any kind of reference pictures, just started building and I'm pretty happy with the result. Let me know if you guys do that. I feel like a lot of times I talk to people and they're always asking where I get my inspiration. And a lot of times I just start building with no, no, no inspiration pictures. And I'm curious if anyone else does that. Cause I think it's so much fun to just like see what happens. Anyway, in the living room here, these couches, these are base game that are green with the pink pillows on them. Something about that just seemed so right. We're also getting a Cordelia statue on the fireplace mantle. And then I'm gonna be filling up this bookcase with all sorts of clutter. I just wanted to make sure it was nice and full and there's a bunch of paintings on the walls. I really liked adding the paranormal paintings above the couch. I thought those were quite interesting and kind of fit the theme I was going for here. And of course, just getting like a hen and a bunny and all of that sort of stuff over on the bookcase and some books as well. Uh, nothing too wild over here, some books and things. It, it just feels too empty, but I thought that this bookcase matched really nicely with the wood tones on the wall and the floor. And then this is the room that I was like, it could have been a bedroom, it could have been an office, but now it's a dining room. <laughs> and of course you could switch it back to whatever works best for you guys if you guys would like to download this build and if you would it will be available on the sims 4 gallery all you have to do is look up my origin id which is griffy gry phi you can also find it under the hashtag miss griffy and that information will also be in the description down below as well but uh <laughs> i have the table a painting some oversized crops and I think just a dining hutch in here in a plant maybe. I kept it fairly simple in this room, but I, I didn't think it needed too much. It was just like, we need a spot to sit down and eat together. So we're gonna turn this room into that. Did I add anything else? Oh, I added a high chair in here. I was imagining there was a toddler in this house and then for a while I started decorating the room as if it were a baby. And then I turned it back into a toddler room because it's so difficult to make nurseries in this game because babies are objects and so we don't have enough stuff for them. And I, I would just like proper cribs, not the tiny bassinets we have. There's so many things I would like and there's so many beautiful things they could make if they either freed babies or gave us like a baby themed stuff pack like nursery stuff or a nursery kit or anything like that. But I feel like I would only be interested in that if we did get updated babies first and we got some stuff and then there was just additional stuff if you wanted to get a stuff pack or a kit. Anyway, that's not related to this build other than the fact that 
I thought about having a baby and then it became a toddler very quickly because I was struggling to decorate the room because the bassinets are so tiny. Anyway, we're in the upstairs bathroom now. There are two bathrooms in this house. One of them is a full bath, which is this one. And then the downstairs one is just a half bath. There is no shower in this house, only a tub because of the layout of the bathroom and also because bathing toddlers, I know you can bathe them in sinks now too or wash them up in sinks, but uh, I still feel like I, I opt to go for the bathtub instead. And then also if you have a dog, that is a good idea uh, to have a tub. And now you can see I threw a bassinet in one of the rooms and figuring out these bedrooms. I decided I wanted to have two kids or teens. They could be whoever you'd like in this room. And I kept it fairly simple. I didn't put a ton of thought into like what Sims were specifically going to live here because I was way more interested in like the weird colors and the shape of the house and the exterior. I just wanted to be like, here are the bedrooms. Let's furnish them. I'm assuming you're going to change them anyway when you download it. And I know a lot of the time I build things with very specific personalities and careers and interests in mind. So every once in a while, it's kind of nice to just be like, I'm just going to decorate. <laughs> I don't know who it's for. Um, but I'm sure there'll be plenty more personality builds coming soon. I do them all of the time. Oh my goodness. I think it's so much fun. Uh, but I was happy to just take a little step back and focus more on just having a couple of bedrooms for this house. And also, I feel like I often build houses or like tiny houses and apartments. They always only have one bedroom. And I know I do that very often. It's something I usually prefer. I typically much more, I find it much more enjoyable to build smaller homes, which is why you don't see like mansions on the channel because I don't find it fun. <laughs> Every once in a while, I feel very inspired and I'm like, I gotta build this big thing right now. But most of the time, I just, I, I don't put myself through that because I, I get very frustrated and uh, The Sims is something I enjoy doing. So I like to do it for fun and post the things I'm proud of for you guys to see. So yeah, and, and chit chat about Sims. Anyway, I don't know how I got to that, but this is the toddler's room. You can see it was a bassinet in there and then it became a toddler bed and then that room was over. And then this is the primary bedroom. It's just got a green bed from the new pack, a couple of side tables, a dresser, and that's pretty much it. There wasn't a lot of space in here. And with that, we are coming to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you give it a big thumbs up. That really does help me out. You can subscribe if you have not already. And if you click that bell, it'll turn on notifications so you'll be notified of every single time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you all soon. Bye everybody.